G'day guys, how we doing? Filming from a new location today, finally made our way to the new place in Brisbane. It's a bit of a, an overcast day here. It's been a very long time since I've been in a, a humid place and I've really forgotten the, um, the effect of uh, what living in humidity is like, the, the warmth and the humidity and the consistent sweating and things like that. But it does of course allow us to grow some beautiful tropical fruits and of course much easier than we do in Canberra. No, I can't uh, take credit for the majority of the fruits in this house so far, seeing as though I never planted any of them. But this is uh, kind of the yard that I've, that I've got to work with now that I'm moving here. And we'll do a very quick tour of the property and some of my thoughts about what my plans are in the future. Uh, we'll have a look at how the figs are doing and how they've gone across the, um, the move across from Canberra. We'll taste any ripe figs that might be there and we'll just kind of have a look uh, and explore the property together as I um, continue to unpack and I've really just started to unpack things as we go. Uh, I've only put a single tree of my own in the ground at the moment, that's this one here. This is a, uh, a black pepper plant and burying that plant in I noticed that we have at this property a really kind of heavy, uh, dense red clay at the property so that's something I'm going to have to work with and when I, when I start thinking about digging things up and planting things in the ground that's something I'm going to have to take into consideration. A lot of plants, plants like avocados for instance, don't like heavy clay soils. Heavy clay soils can cause a whole heap of different problems um, and they can be really really hard to dig into as well but let's let's have a look through the property. We've got a, a lemonade planted by the previous owners and I'm actually thinking about putting another citrus or two in this little spot that's kind of adjacent to this lemonade because I've got so many plants and not enough space to put them in. We've got some papayas growing. I'm not sure whether this is a male or a female. It looks like it might be a female by the looks of those flowers in there. Property has in place uh, a black mulberry up the back. I do like mulberries. I think they can uh, they can take up a lot of space and I might take that out and put something more um, interesting in than a mulberry, although I do like the flavour of mulberries. There's a mango already at the property. This is um, the owners, previous owners called it a banana mango. So there's no flowers or mangoes on it, this one at the moment. I'm not sure when the flowering season will be, but I'll keep an eye on that as things go. There's a little guava tree down here already at the property. So guavas grow particularly well in, in Queensland. You can see there's a few guavas on that already, which I'll look forward to trying once they become ripe. Whole heap of stag horns and elk horns in here and all the, the tropical trees. It's just such a different look to Canberra. Just the, the, the tropics, it's, to me, the plants that just feel more interesting, more vibrant and dynamic. And I just, uh, I really love the look, but this humidity is gonna take a little bit to overcome. We have up the back there, you can see over the top of this hedge some bananas. They're apparently ladyfinger bananas already in the ground, so looking forward to trying some of those. With the first of my figs that I've relocated, and it's only once you start moving house when you've got as many plants as I have that you realise how many plants you actually own. And I got rid of 70% of my collection, all of my um, all of my apples and other stone fruits and other palm type fruits I got rid of them all and I retained essentially only the figs and a few tropicals for instance I brought along these sour sops which you'll find a place in the ground I brought along my bananas a bit of a close look at some of the bananas that are already here so these are apparently ladyfinger bananas might have a taste of some figs as we see some coming along. So we've got a ripe fig on this plant here. Um, we've had a few dry days uh, since I've arrived. Been quite hot. It's been in the early 30s. Um, very humid, very hot. This is a, a Galicia Negra, Galicia Negra. Uh, I don't think it's going to be particularly good. It's a first year cutting, this one here. So um, it has only just been uh, cutting last year and it's put on a heap of figs look how many figs are on this first year cutting and this is the first one that it's ripened because it's had a little bit of its water withheld over the last week I don't expect it to be particularly good but because we have a few days rain forecast um, this will probably swell and crack if I leave it on the tree so we'll give it a try um, I don't think this is going to be representative of how the fig will be in the future I think that um, 
this is just simply a very first taste before we get to see maybe next year or in a few months what this this particular plant is truly capable of having said that it's a very nice fig a little bit watery I think it's already taken a bit of the rain from earlier today got a nice berry flavor it's a very thick meaty fig nice figgy flavor crunchy seeds quite a good fig actually I'm surprised by that so that's the um, the Galicia Negra quite good for the uh, first fig that's ever put on and definitely shows a lot of potential for the future as well so this plant will only get better over time and look how many figs I can expect to get off this tiny little tree but let's keep going curry plant came with me we'll put that in the garden elderberry I brought with me in this garden we have some pineapples it looks like there's a pineapple down here that's ready to be picked now I don't know much about growing pineapples I've never grown them but apparently when they flop sideways like this one and looks quite yellow like this one you should basically be able to snap it off just like so so maybe straight after I finish filming this video we'll um, we'll give this first pineapple a taste test and we'll see how see how they go over here. So let's uh, balance the pineapple here for now so I'm not carrying it the rest of the way. That's pretty cool isn't it? First pineapple from the garden, I didn't plant this one but uh, still it's, <laughs> it's still going to be a treat for me that's for sure. Now the pawpaw, this looks like a, a male, so you need a male and a female papaya uh, to get fruits off these plants. And now here we have where I'm storing the majority of my plants at the moment. We have all the figs that I've got, the citrus that I've brought across, various like this wompy, another subtropical, with a persimmon looking a little bit sad at the moment all through here all of these figs that have been stored a lot of plants i brought over I noticed another ripe-ish fig over here that we may as well give a crack for the same reasons we tried the galicia negra so this is a green fig green ashia is this particular fig it's feeling fairly soft to touch in fact it's far softer than the other one let's give this one a crack quite a closed eye on this one we'll do proper tastings of these in the future this is more of an ad hoc sort of see how we go hmm that's a very decent fig potentially even overripe I can taste a slight overripeness in there it's much much sweeter than the last one we tried doesn't really have any berry flavors Very nice fig though, a lot of honey in that fig. Very decent fig. All of these other figs that will be coming on and we'll try over the year as um, as time goes. We've got the white sapotes that I brought along. Let's see up against the um, inverter there we have some cherimoya. Another cherimoya here that's come along. Cape chestnut, which I was pretty sure I was going to put in the ground, but maybe I won't anymore. It's difficult to say because I'm having space problems. Don't know what I'm going to put all these plants. And then the front yard and my biggest kind of, my biggest dilemma. The front yard is west facing, so we catch all the afternoon sun and it, the sun is quite fierce, so it's very, very hot. This property has a nice hedge that the, the previous owners put in. But I just, I'm not a big fan of hedges. I, I think they look nice, but they're not particularly productive. I like to fill my place with fruit trees, as you can imagine, and as you probably know. So I have to decide how I'm going to kind of plant up this, this front. It's going to be a lot of work to remove these hedges. And they're quite established. Another thing I don't like about hedges is you've got to maintain the damn things. You've got to continually cut them back so that they keep their shape and their form. 
they're quite thick at the base so it's going to be a, a bit of a job to pull them out if I don't choose to do so and I'm sure the neighbours like the look of the hedge as it's here but I'd rather plant things out and I've started to do so so I've got over here an Inga Adulis, an ice cream bean I want some plants that are going to go quickly they're going to provide shade and shade out, the, um, shade out this yard so that my son can play in this kind of front area without getting sunburnt it's very open so when the when the kind of afternoon sun comes down it's just very very hot and i'm just wondering about the spacing because a plant like this really requires four five six meter spacing between plants it can grow to be quite a large plant but um you can't fit many plants when you're spacing them five or six meters a plant this is uh, approximately 15 meters the front of this um might be more than that, I'd have to go back and check. I thought it was 15 metres, but it looks longer now that I'm looking at it. But so I'm thinking maybe I'll space these plants at two metre intervals and maybe in the future when they start to grow together, remove some of them. I'm not sure yet. But um, either way, it'll probably require me removing these, these hedges, if not immediately, then in the medium term. More cherimoyas out here. More bananas that I still haven't moved out. Got another fig here that may or may not be ripe it's got a bit of give in it i think this is a white adriatic very open eye i saw some ants in here earlier we might pick this one and just give it a bit of a go again with the rain that's coming over the next couple of days it might turn out that these um these will split or sour if, if they are left out especially with an eye of that size and especially if ants are kind of entering the plant That's quite a strong berry flavour. It's not as red as I remember it being last year. It's kind of got this ambery, uh, light pink colour interior. It's a little bit bland. It is a berry flavour. It's not particularly sweet. I think it needs a little bit more time on the tree. It's okay. I might give this one just a day or two more before I pull that out and see how the rain affects it. Definitely more of a berry flavour, but it wasn't as good as either of the other two that I tried. However, I do recall in my tasting video last year where I found one of those um, white Adriatics, which is what I think it is, um, on the ground. And I, I, I tried it, it was probably one of the best figs of the year, so it just goes to show. I was thinking about putting some uh, Japota Carver in here, they're apparently quite easy to size manage. Got a bungosia over here, peanut butter fruit. That I was thinking about putting in this little garden bed here. And I have some trees that I thought I was going to do things with, but now I don't think I will. And this is a flame tree that I've had in a pot for a while. It's a, uh, it's from Dally's. Little ladybug on there. It's from Dally's. It's a flame tree cross lace bark uh, bracket pikeen. And I was really kind of looking forward to putting this in the ground when I moved here. However, after having arrived at the property, I noticed that one of my neighbours already has one of these trees. And just having a look at how absolutely massive it is, that's kind of put me off. Plus having um, issues with space as it is, I've got all of these trees and I don't know if I'm going to have to plant them at two or three metre increments just to get them all in the ground. I don't know if I want to waste a spot with a flowering tree when I can put a fruiting tree in there, we'll, we'll have to see. But if you have a look over the back here, that massive green tree in shot there, that's one of those flame trees, so shows how absolutely humongous they can get. And I'm just thinking, do I really want a tree that will eventually become that size in my yard? Maybe if it was a fruiting tree I would. Look at the size of that. That's a big tree. And so maybe I'll um, forego that one or try to keep it in a pot or maybe some other solution I don't know just yet. Lots of little spaces I can feel. This is an east facing side of the property. So obviously in the afternoon it gets shaded out by the house. So lots of little shady undergrowth spots that I can put some shade loving plants in. All of this undergrowth under here I can put some little tropicals in and maybe clear some of the trees over time to give it a little bit more light as they grow up through it. 
avocados are a good one that do like a bit of shade especially when they're young and I was wondering if this little spot here might be good for an avocado maybe that's approximately one to two meters from the fence there big path here so that it can grow into and as it grows up and gets quite big it should uh, it should catch that afternoon sun over here but be protected in the mornings whilst it establishes itself so I think this little spot here might be where I plant an avocado through this undergrowth down here it's quite thick I don't know if there's going to be enough light for me to plant in here um, I might have to remove some plants from here to get some shade lovers in there where they can hopefully grow out through that kind of canopy eventually we'll have to see a few camellias at the property bougainvillea bougainvillea is another one I don't know what to do with uh, bougainvillea is a very pretty plant so it's got these beautiful flowers uh, but it is and it is a climber it's a hedging plant and so they do look particularly nice but they have obviously those horrible thorns that you get on bougainvilleas um, and as you go to kind of prune them down, especially as they get older, those thorns quickly become a pain in the ass. And it is in a fairly premium position where I could rip that bougainvillea out potentially and put some more productive fruiting plants in there. I just haven't decided when the old owners obviously have gone through so much work to um, set up the property as they have in, in a way that really kind of comes together quite nicely. I'm reluctant to pull things out, but at the same time, I have my own visions and thoughts that I'd like to kind of do. Anyway guys, I know I've prattled on for a bit in this video. It's really just a hello again video. Um, we'll get back on track and look at some more of these figs in depth over the next couple of weeks as they um, undoubtedly start to ripen. As I get more of a plan for that front yard, these soursops are probably going to go in there. I'll come back and we'll have a chat about that and see how they go over time. Yeah, in the meantime, catch you all from Brisbane next time. See you later.